In this video, we are going to see a concept called background processes in Android. Uh, in a lot of other uh, ways in programming, we would have seen uh, something called background process, which means uh, in Java, it is much more famously uh, referred by this name called threads. So if you see, uh, I hope you already know what is a thread and all those things. It's there in core Java part of it. But I'm just going to give a quick overview of what is a thread in Java and uh, how you're going to use this to do a background process in Android. So <clears throat> you already know what multi-threading is. It is a Java feature which allows you to uh, have two or more uh, concurrent execution of uh, some uh, some of the, some parts of the program to maximize the output of your uh, or the utilization of your CPU. So uh, in other words, in normal ways, Java has one thread, one main thread which is running, and then uh, if you want to do something parallelly to that execution, you would be using uh, a thread. So uh, normally it is uh, that small, small part in a program, we call them as threads and they are all lightweight processes within a big process. Uh, uh, your Google Chrome, when it runs, it runs as one application and in your task manager it is considered as one process but if you open uh, the task manager within Chrome uh, you will see that it has a little bit uh, it's its own task manager which manages each and every plugin what you have installed each and every tab which you have opened everything is considered as a thread in other words a sub process inside uh, the main process of chrome.exe so uh, that's just an idea of how, what is a thread and what is it used for now when coming back to android uh, why do we need threads or why do we need background processing in android that's a uh, that's the first question we need to ask so in uh, android it refers to number one i want you to focus on this word execution of tasks in different threads other than the main thread of your ui so in android when you run something like for example an activity uh, ui is running which means a main ui uh, the main thread is already running what i mean by background processing is that uh, apart from that main ui thread if you want to do something else which is uh, like a time consuming one or maybe a long process, whatever it is, uh, task which is not part of the main thread can be considered as a processing in the background thread. So that is what we are gonna see here. Uh, for example, in the main thread, you have views are inflated uh, and you see the user interacts with your app. That part is called the main. Apart from that, whatever happens, we'll put it into a different, different process. We'll see a video with that example in the next one. but try to understand why we need background processing in Android. The number one reason is that there's a main thread, there's a UI thread in which all your process, whatever we have done so far has only one, one main UI thread in which we are working. Remaining everything is taken one step at a time. We have never done something which is simultaneous or parallel to each other. So that's what uh, we are going to do in this video. Uh, I'm just going to explain why uh, background processing and how it affects your uh, Android program. Why should I use background processing? Why can't I just do one by one? What is the big deal in this? Okay, so please note this one to avoid UI uh, blockages. I'll show what are those blockages shortly by IO events, which means input output events or to prevent that famous application not responding dialogue. In other words, ANR, uh, that's a short form we use to uh, denote to apps which do not respond to you within a particular point of time. Uh, your uh, system would throw a message saying that this application is not responding. That, that happens because you have not handled background processing properly. So uh, we'll see how to fix that. A freezing app. Uh, app which freezes normally means it's a bad user experience so we should we should not do that we will try to avoid it as much as possible now uh, the question of why background processing is because most of the times your http like for example uh, if you see most of the apps do not have data within that app when you download it but rather when you open that app data is downloaded from the internet and then displayed to you through that app so in that case it becomes a complicated thing we cannot use http uh, within the foreground itself because it might take some time to load and meanwhile when it's loading your system might think that your application is not responding etc etc so some operations are not allowed to run in the main thread such as http calls which we will be doing shortly most importantly to improve performance this is why we need background processing so now uh, a, a quick overview of what is that anr what is that application not responding an anr will be triggered for your app when one of these following conditions occur there are lots which is nothing but uh, while your activity is in the foreground your app has not responded to something within five seconds please note when your activity is running in the foreground and you are trying to interact with it and it is not responded to your event or a broadcast receiver within five seconds which means uh, more than five seconds your app is just idle it's not responding to the touch events which you have triggered 
in that case your android system would trigger this please note i am not going to trigger this manually anr system is going to trigger that and uh, while you have an activity not in the foreground but if your broadcast receiver is also not responding more than a particular time then again ANR will come into picture. While talking about ANR, I wanted to remember this word which we'll be using in the next consecutive programs, strict mode. Okay, uh, why do I need to use strict mode is to find accidental IO operations on the main thread. Uh, please remember this word, what I've said, I'll use that in the code so that you'll understand what it means. But please remember, strict mode helps you find accidental uh, input output operations on the main thread while you're developing your app you can use it at application level or activity level doesn't matter but that is a mode uh, focus on that word it is most commonly used to catch accidental disk or, or network access on the applications main thread i'll be using for network access so remember that and uh, background processing what are the ways in which you can do that uh, you already know two ways which is part of the core java aspect uh, you would have come across these two words thread and runnable both are belonging to core java we'll be, you can use it in android also because android uh, java is a subset of uh, java se so we can use that in android specifically for android which is uh, which has a little bit more sophisticated methods is async task which we'll be using in the next video in this video i'll just uh, explain how to use uh, all these three with a simple example thread implementation in core java can be implemented in two ways can you see that uh, uh, the first and second point just remember that extending the thread class implementing the runnable interface please note the words i wanted to remember the words what i've said extending the thread class implementing runnable interface you can see a code here i'll be showing this shortly but then remember the word what i've used implements runnable extends thread uh, we'll see it in working to demonstrate this uh, program the working of thread and stuff i've just made a simple project uh, please note this uh, design i'm not doing it during the video because you can do this on your own just put some controls uh, like the clickable or changeable controls like i've put switch and check boxes just three things they don't have anything in the program to do i have only one uh, control which is going to be programmatically uh, done something so we're going to do a button when you click on it i'm going to do a thread process and in the meanwhile i'm going to show you how the ui will respond during that time so for that purpose i've just created a linear layout i've put switches and checkboxes you can put how many other controls you want this is just to demonstrate the working and i put a button also here so start thread process so when you click on this i want to do something so uh, let's go to the code part in the code part all i'm going to do is i'm going to create a small block of code which will be doing uh, 10 seconds worth of operations like a long process since i don't want to write complicated code right now i'll keep write a simple code which will emulate that 10 seconds working uh, code so let's start i'm going to write public uh, void i'm going to just name it as thread operation so operations uh, just a simple method we are creating this is not the uh, button click method i'm going to call this on button click so uh, i've just created a simple method on my own thread operations and we are going to write a simple code i want the program to show me progress while it is happening so i'm going to put a for i i is equal to zero i is uh, let me just make it as i equal to one i is less than equal to ten so 10 times the loop will run every time the loop runs i want the system to delay the process by one second so you know already this code so i'm just going to call uh, thread dot sleep how long do you want to sleep in milliseconds i'm say one second so which means thousand milliseconds and the error which comes is because uh, thread is a sensitive operation if you don't put a uh, exception handler it might throw an exception is a it's a valid reason so i'm going to just say surrounded with try catch so i have a try catch and this is going to happen so if you see the code it just means that 10 times the loop will run every time the loop runs the loop will make the system uh, or the process or the right now whatever is doing it will make it wait for one second and then go to the next loop so which means 10 seconds this will take this operation alone will take 10 seconds and while this is happening i would like to see an output also so i'm going to put a lock at uh, log so that i can keep a uh, overview so now i'm going to just key uh, log t which is the tag which i want to give in the beginning so i'm just going to say my threads so this is the name what you want to give so this is my tag name and here inside the try block before the thread sleeps i'm going to put log d so um in that one tag will already uh, will pull it up from my uh, global variable i'm going to say thread operations number and i'm going to just concatenate that with i done so now every time the um, 
the thread operation runs a log will be added it will wait for one second then go back and this entire process will be repeated for 10 seconds which means 10 times so uh, let's see when will this be called it will it should be called when you click on the button so i am going to create another method <clears throat> which is going to handle the buttons uh, click so i'm going to write a public void um let's say start uh, thread i am going to pass view object so that this can be mapped in our design so i'm going to here call the thread operations that's it uh, why I'm writing this as a method is because I'm going to call it in two or three different places. So I've written this block of code so that we can reuse it again and again. So this is the thread operations which will be called on click of your button. So let me go to the design and map it. In the design, I'm going to click on the button. I'm going to go to the attributes and find an attribute called on click and choose that start thread uh, method. That's it. So our work here is done. Let's go back to the code. In the code, please note that uh, when you click on the button, this method is called. In this method, I've written uh, thread sleeping uh, or a long running process for 10 seconds now please note till this operation is done your first the main ui thread what you're working with should be blocked uh, which means you have not made it as a parallel process you have made it as a regular process so let's see what is the output and how to fix that problem let's run the program the program is running now now if you see this is the design what i've done none of these three controls have any uh, user response so if you click on them nothing would happen it's just the you can see that the state changes so when i click on it the, the state changes now when i click on start thread process i have written a code uh, so that every time the loop runs a log is added as well as it waits for one second and then goes to the next time of the loop so remember this and uh, i've given the tag as my thread so only my threads tags will be displayed in my output so let's start the process process and in the meantime please understand this is the main ui thread when you click on this there's a process happening while this process is happening the main ui thread is frozen which means nothing else will be allowed to happen while uh, one work is going on no sequential or simultaneous access so let's see that i'm going to click on start thread process once it starts reading here i'm going to try to click on these controls whether they respond right now they respond because uh, no other process only one at a time so let's start the thread process you have to, thread process has started one two three going on so now i'm trying to click on async task or any of these controls none of those controls respond to me the reason is uh, by now you would have understood the reason is because uh, my my ui thread my ui thread is running and you have not given a thread handler you have not told any background processes here and your system did not respond to you for more than five seconds this is not generated by me it is generated by the system the system generates this because it understands that for more than five seconds you've been trying to click on something on your um, program and the program did not respond the, why the program did not respond is because it was busy doing this in the main thread so the remaining parts in the main thread were not uh, given focus on so that is why they all froze and they were, were not working so how do i fix this issue this is the issue when it comes uh, to background process which means a lot of other things which you want to do without affecting the ui which is their uh, ui thread or the main thread which is shown to the user so let's see how to fix that in the program now let's fix that issue what we saw just now uh, by using a thread concept i'm going to do all the three things in the same program uh, thread runnable as well as async task in the same program just to demonstrate how it works but then uh, we'll be doing a, a separate video on just async task to explain how android async task works so here i'm going to remove this uh, on click of the method uh, the start thread method i don't want to call thread operations rather i would like to do something else so how do i do that so for that purpose i'm going to create a class an inner class please note i don't want to complicate the code so i'm going to uh, there's a main activity already there inside that i'm going to create my own class uh, let's call it as a uh, thread example this is the first way of uh, using a thread in your program that is the first one what i told in the ppt it's extending a thread so i'm going to write a, the thread example is my own keyword and then i say uh, extends thread i've created a simple class which just extends from thread that's it now inside this uh, just like your public static void main one important method is required here that is nothing but run you would have come across this already so i'm just going to type the word run you see there's only one method suggestion comes i'm going to press enter and there's some block of code coming i'm going to remove that super dot run and just call the thread operations done so uh, which means if you create an instance of this class and say start i'll just run this particular code so how do i uh, call this class so i'm going to just create an object of that class thread example uh, let me keep the object as the same is equal to new thread example created a new object now call that object and then say start 
done now i'm going to run the program once again please note i've not changed much only one difference is that i have told not to run it in the main ui but run it in a separate thread which i created just now so we have created a separate class which handles this thread and i've just told that class to start which means this will not run in my main ui it will run in a separate uh, thread so uh, it should not affect my main thread that's the idea so let's run the program now the program is running uh, but this time i've not made uh, it on the main ui but rather i put it on a separate uh, thread called the example uh, the thread example so let now let me just uh, click on these controls and see if it works it's all working normally i'm going to start the thread process which will start another thread not from this ui thread it will create another thread and run this process so let's see it's running one two three now in the meantime i'm going to try and access these controls and they are responding to me the reason is because i have not touched the ui thread the ui thread is still active when i clicked on this button all you have done is you created your own thread separately and you have asked that operation to happen which does not affect your ui at all this is one way of handling a background process in android uh, which takes the concept from core java now let's do the second way of doing the same thing uh, i'll not show the output but the output will be exactly the same i'm just going to show you the next code which can uh, which will do the same thing now all i'm going to do is i am going to comment these two lines of code so that uh, the thread example is not called again i'm going to create another class uh, but i'm going to call it as runnable example but please remember according to the ppt i said one is one way is to extend a thread this other way is to implement a runnable so i'm going to call implements runnable I'm going to call that uh, interface implements runnable. So if you have implemented something, you should also implement its methods, which is important. Either you can click on the bulb or you can just click on control I to get the uh, method to implement. I'm going to choose this method called run and you already have the code. So now all I need to do in that run, what do you want me to do due to you implementing this runnable interface? All I need to do is the thread operations, which I've already created. That's it. How do I call this? It's a little bit trickier than calling a, a class, which is extending thread. I'm going to call a runnable example. Let's name it as it is runnable example is equal to new runnable example. This is a runnable interfaces object. So now I all I need to do is call thread again. I need to call thread because it's not the class which I'm executing. And in that bracket, I need to pass a runnable object to that thread, which you have done in the last semester. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just call that runnable example object. That is the runnable. I'm going to say dot start. That's it this is the same code which is uh, please note these two are synonyms which means they are similar uh, but they are not exactly the same but they are similar how uh, or, and when the working is almost the same only difference is when should i use what see uh, by the way the output is same uh, if i run the program now uh, background process will go on my ui will still respond to me because idea is still the same now the reason why i'm uh, i'm showing you both is because please note the keyword used in both this is a prop appropriate this is also an appropriate way but when do i choose what so if i choose extends it is pretty straightforward right uh, if you write extends uh, just write a run and then create an object of that and then say start it's very pretty uh, straightforward but then when it comes to implements you need to implement an interface and then implement uh, uh, its method and then pass that to a thread and then start so this becomes a little bit more complicated so why would i even use this implements and why can't i just use uh, extends it all lies in the keyword itself if you remember java has a mission to just extend one class not more than that uh, it, it does not support multiple inheritance so you cannot write extends thread comma something else but if you use implements you can write implement something else also along with runnable which makes it more uh, recommended to use when you start working with threads so remember this too now these two are core java what about android java how do i do it in android you have another concept called async task which does the same thing so i'm going to comment this also out so that it is not called i'm going to create another class and let me name it as async example here it extends from async task Please note, it expects you to pass some things. I'm not going to pass it here in this program. In the next program, I'll do only async task in which we will be seeing uh, in detail about async task. Someone is called async task and close the bracket and it expects you to pass uh, or implement one. It's one of its compulsory method, which is known as do in background. I think this is much, much more self uh, explanatory because it says do it in the background. So in the background, what would you like to do? I'm just going to call that um, thread operations and it is done now how do i call this uh, 
async task let me go back to the click button i'm going to call an object of async example so let me name it as async example is equal to new async example I've created an object and then i'm going to call async example and then say execute done this is the same as what we have written all the in all the three methods what i've written it's exactly the same but only one difference is that uh, this is specific to android alone it's just, it has a lot of other methods which are uh, which will help you in doing a little bit more sophisticated operations with respect to android uh, by now you have understood how these uh, background processes work and how to use a thread and runnable uh, to make the background processing work i'm going to go into the details of uh, how, how to work with an async task in this video so uh, in the last class what we discussed is that uh, we have thread and runnable from the core java and uh, for android we have uh, async task so uh, we can use both in android but then i'm going to specifically talk about async task because you'll see that there are different methods and it understands how android works so it gives different different parameters or functions to get you work done i'm going to begin with the methods which are important when you uh, extend an async task uh, the first thing you need to pass is parameters which I'll talk later but right now I want you to focus on four different method names which comes from async task. Uh, the first one is pre-execute. Names are pretty self-explanatory because uh, this uh, pre-execute starts just before your background processing starts. So before doing your background operations we should if you want you can show something on the user uh, the progress bar or progress dialog something like that we can show that before uh, your background process starts. The second and the most important or the required uh, method which you have to implement is do in background within brackets params. Uh, when I say params it may, it may be anything. It can be a string, it can be an integer, a boolean, a float, an object, whatever it is. We need to pass, uh, if you want to do something in the background, if you have anything to pass to it, to pass it in this. In the last class I did not pass anything, you got object array, we did not use it, we just continued uh, and we did our work. But then uh, in some uh, programs you might need to pass some parameters which I will be doing in this video. So uh, this should not touch anything in the main uh, thread or activity. Please remember uh, this method, why I have highlighted this is that is the reason. This should not touch any uh, main thread activities or fragments. It should not touch anything which is coming from the main UI thread, remember that. And the third method is progress update. Uh, within brackets, you need to pass the progress and either as, as a string or an integer. It depends on you, how you want to give it. So while you're working on the background, you can also push something to the main UI showing that what is happening. For example, if you're downloading something, uh, let's say if it is a 1 MB file, uh, I need not wait till full 1 MB is downloaded. I can still show you how much is downloaded. Uh, that is the progress. So you can keep publishing your progress using that method on progress update. The last one is post execute. So after your background process is done, what do you want me to do in the main thread? So in this method, you can update the UI of your uh, background operations result. These are the methods. Please remember pre-execute, do in background, uh, progress update, post execute. And as I told in the beginning, if you are extending an async task, immediately you need to pass three important generic types uh, which are passed to that async task. Starting with number one, type of. Uh, type of var arg uh, in the sense you can what the kind of data are you going to pass to the do in background thing if you don't pass anything object array will be by default passed reason is object can hold anything so if you want to specifically pass a number pass that here if you want to specifically pass a string pass it here so it depends on how you want to do it i'll show an example today and the second one is the value of the progress so uh, are you going to show uh, uh, the uh, the number or how much i've done or are you going to verbally say almost done uh, please wait uh, we are starting beginning think in some uh, application they give you the update in words like uh, begun uh, doing some processes and almost done like that we can show that is our wish how you want to show the progress value i'm going to use percentages to show uh, that is you can either calculate it or you can give it and the last one is what type of data will you get back after doing this pro uh, background processing are you getting back something if so what type of data are you getting back so that also we can pass in this uh, generic types with this small information let's get to the program before we start with the program let me just give you an overview of what we are trying to do. I am going to put a button, uh, a text view and an image view 
and then when you click on the button i would like you to go to the internet fetch one image which is there in the internet and bring it back to my app and display it in my app that's all but the problem here is when you when i said go to the internet and get something the data which means the resource is not there in my uh, app or the activity right now you need to go to the internet fetch it and then come back so uh, please note that internet has its own traffic so uh, when it comes uh, to this particular operation it's a network operation if you uh, keenly notice this it's a network based operation which means it needs to go to a network fetch something and come back this cannot be done on the uh, main ui thread if you remember in the last video i've mentioned that http calls cannot be done in the main it should not be done in the main uh, ui thread that is not recommended so what should i do i should use a background process so here in this program we are going to do that let's do the design now so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a button and uh, followed by which I, i'm putting a text view and followed by which i'll put an image view so i have three controls and for the image view i'll just choose something which is a uh, template because anyway the data is going to be filled by me later so i'm going to just click on okay now i have three uh, controls there so let me just start naming them and uh, aligning them appropriately i'm going to give uh, a margin of let's say 10 dp between these and uh, between the, the image view alone i don't want it to be uh, near anything so I'll, let me give a bigger uh, margin let's say 30 dp or something I just want it away so that you know the it is a little bit away from everything now uh, let's continue with uh, the naming so let me go to the first one um, i'm going to change the button's name btn uh, download so the text of this i'm going to say download the image that's all that you can give whatever you want and then the next one is the text view since i'm going to programmatically manipulate it i'm going to put tv uh, progress because it is going to show the progress of it right now i'm going to just put the word please wait while we get the image as soon as you start this activity i'm going to disable it which means uh, making it invisible and then i'm going to make it visible once the download the progress is showing whether it's happening and then the last one the image view i'm going to just name it as image uh, underscore uh, logo so i am going to get the college logo and display it in this uh, place that's it so let's go to the code part in the code part what we are going to do here is number one i am going to take up uh, those two controls uh, button i'm going to do a, a method which is just going to call it and link it in the design uh, two things which i need in the program is going to be number one text view so let me create a text view which says progress text uh, one the second one is an image view so uh, let me name it as the logo image that's enough so these two things let me just instantiate them also so i'm going to say uh, progress text is equal to find view by id r dot id dot tv progress and the next one is the logo image is equal to find view by id r dot id dot image underscore low so i've mapped them all appropriately this much uh, we pretty much know already so now uh, let me fix that button issue also let's create a simple method public uh, void uh, let me just say uh, start download something like that and within brackets i'm going to pass the object of view and here we are going to call the code which is supposed to download the image so let me just go to the design and link this also and then come back here in the design i'm going to click on the button going to its attributes and finding out on click method and let me just choose that method which we created start download done let's go back to the code when you click on that button this method will be called but what do you want to do when you click on this button uh, i want you to download the image from a particular url and then pass it uh, to the image view so that the image view would have the data with it so in order to do that we need to go to the internet and then download the image and then pass that image as a bitmap to your image view how do i do that first of all uh, the first word I said was to go to the internet, which means you, your app must have access to the internet, which is a small permission, which by default is not given to your app. Let's go and ask it in the manifest.xml. Uh, now I'm in the manifest. Let's go and go ahead and just add uses permission. Let me look for the permission called internet. That's all. This one line is enough, even if you are uh, running the latest version. The uh, taking it in the code is not required for this kind of a permission because this is not uh, an interruptive permission. Let's get back to the code. Now, since I have the permission of the internet, all I need to do is get a URL, go to that and then fetch it and uh, display it here. In the last PPT, I had mentioned that uh, you cannot use 
the main UI to download or to talk to HTTP connections. Since my URL is going to be HTTP colon slash slash stack hyphen name it dot in something, you cannot use that on the main UI. So you need a background process. In this case specifically, I'm going to create a background process using async task. So let's create class. Uh, let me just say download uh, image. Let's give a, by the way, this can be any name you want. This is my class name I've given, uh, which will extend from an async task. But please note, async task requires three parameters to be passed. The three parameters are number one, the first is the var r parameter, which means uh, what type of data would be passed to the do in background. Second one, uh, what type of data will be shown as the progress. And the last one is what will be the result of your uh, do in background thing. So let me just start with async task and let's open a generic type. So the first type what I'm going to pass is what data will you pass to the do in background? I'll be passing a URL. Okay, there is no data type called URL. So the data type is string. So I'm going to pass a string to your do in background. Second one, how would you show the progress? Uh, the progress I'm going to show it as a number. So let me just use the word integer. Please note this is uh, expecting a generic type. Please never use int uh, and bool and car and all. Let's use a full uh, wrapper class. The last one is the result. What will be the result of your operation? Please remember what you're trying to do is a download an image. The result will not be a, a, a string or a, a, or a number. It will be a, a image, which means I'm going to use the concept of bitmap here. The result will be a bitmap, which belongs to android.graphics. Done. So we have uh, created a class. Please note it is an inner class inside main activity. All right. So in this one, it must implement one of the methods. I told there are four methods. If you remember, there are four methods. I'll just show you all the four methods. You see on pre execute on post execute on progress update do in background. Uh, ignoring these two for now just remember on pre-execute post execute progress update do in background if you choose all these four uh, please note all the four are not compulsory this is the compulsory one not the three these three are optional but anyway i'm going to just choose one and click on ok so that uh, you see that there is no error here which means this is the most compulsory method which is do in background the remaining can be added by us as and when we require i am going to add them one by one in the order please note the order in which i add is not important it will execute in that order but i'm writing it just for your clarity so i'm going to start with the first one on pre-execute that's the first method which will be called once you create uh, or call execute this uh, async task the second one uh, will be do in background and the third one is while it is doing in the background if you would like to publish a progress so i'm going to say on progress update that's the next method which will be called the last one is obvious on post execute that's the last method which will be called the order in which i've written the methods here is just for our clarity this is how it will be called but even if you shuffle and write whatever order you want, it will still work because the order in which we write doesn't matter. It will be called in a particular order. Before we proceed with this program, you need to understand that this is the only method which takes your activities into another thread. All the other three things will execute on your main UI thread. So it does not deviate from your task. Only this method, what you write inside here will be written in a different uh, thread remaining everything will happen in the main UI thread now that the async task is ready let's start with uh, calling it let's try to call this because I need to know from where to get the data so let me create an object of this method download image so I'm going to just name it as download is equal to new download image I'm just going to call that a download and then say dot execute Please note, execute now re uh, requires you to pass something. Last program, I did not pass anything. Here, I'm expecting you to pass a string. So what should I pass here? Okay, please note, this should be the URL of your uh, image. In my case, I'm going to put the uh, URL of the college logo. I'm just going to type HTTPS colon slash slash sac hyphen amit dot in slash a logo dot png. This is my URL, which I have. Uh, I'm just passing that to the execute method of my async task so now when you read, uh, when you come here you see there are three dots it uh, it is somewhat like a javascript notation but do not get confused this is just a list of strings in other words so if i just call strings of zero i'll get this what you pass as a first parameter to execute so let's get that 
what is the return type of my uh, do in background the return type is bitmap so let me create a bitmap which i'll be passing it shortly so let me just name it as bmp is equal to null so i'm going to instantiate it to null and keep it there and return bmp now in between these two what i do uh, should make a difference if i get the value if i get the image uh, the image should return otherwise null only will return so i'm going to put a try catch now try a block of code and I also let me write the catch with an exception general why I'm writing it in a try catch is because uh, for sure there are some some issues which will come because I'm trying to go away from my program get data and come so it might have an issue so before I write the code for this particular downloading the uh, image let me just get you a brief overview number one you need to make sure that whatever the user has passed to you here should be understood by the system as a URL number one number two is that I need to make sure that it is a HTTP connection so I am going to open a HTTP connection from Android to that particular uh, location what you have mentioned connect it and then uh, getting the data will not come just like that because if you remember the internet does not pass data as whatever data type you pass it is passing in packets so i'm going to get whatever is passed to you to me into input stream a stream of data which is passed to me with that input stream i'm going to remerge them into a bitmap using an inbuilt uh, method so let's start with that uh, first thing i'm going to create is the url so I'm going to create a URL which belongs to java.net. So let me just name it as image URL so that you know what it is, is equal to new URL. And within brackets, I need to pass which URL would you like to pass. So I'm going to call that strings of zero. So you've got a URL. I've got the URL now. Now I need to just open that URL. How do I open it? It's a HTTP connection. So I need to just open HTTP URL connection. Let me just object. Uh, let me name the object as connection is equal to. Uh, I'm going to just call that URL what we have image URL dot open connection. Please note this will return a URL connection which you are looking for. But it is actually looking for HTTP URL which I'll type cast it. So I'm going to say open connection. Done. So now the second thing is type cast it. Let's cast it into a HTTP URL connection. So I have the connection ready now. The next thing I need is the input stream. So I'm going to say input stream uh, short form is equal to connection dot get input stream. Now from that connection, whatever data you have retrieved using that URL, convert it into an input stream and store it there. I've got the input stream also. The next thing I'm going to create is the bitmap, which I already have. So I'm going to say BMP is equal to uh, I'm going to use the bitmap factory and say decode that resource, decode the stream what you have received from the internet. Which stream is that? That's the input stream. Done. By now you have your BMP. The bitmap is already downloaded here and it is available for you to use. So all you need to do is uh, return this BMP once the do in background is over. So now uh, please note that none of uh, in this place I have not published my result. I'm assuming that my internet is fast so that I need not show update to you. But imagine if the image is bigger. This image is only some KB so it will not take much time to download. But when it comes to an image which is like 1 MB, 2 MB or 24 MB whatever it is. Uh, that time you are this process might take time you need to show them what is happening now you have got the bitmap from the url which you have passed now after this please note in this program nothing has happened yet because it just returns the bitmap please note it just returns the bitmap if the catch block had executed if there is some problem in your code null would have been returned but if your try block was successful bmp would be stored with uh, the image which you got from the internet once you got the image from the internet all you need to do is display it in that image view which you can't do it here i cannot map it here the reason is if i map it here uh, there'll be an exception the exception is you cannot access the main ui thread from do and background so where can i access it from after you have finished everything post execute so let me call the post execute and uh, let's just add that here so let me call that image view um, i think i've given it as logo image dot set image bitmap whatever is returned on post execute what is returned to you is what you got in the do in background so i've got the bitmap i'll just pass it here now let's run the program and see whether the first part of our program works then we will add a little bit more this is the output of the program i've got a button i've got a text view and there's an image view here since i did not set an image view in the design nothing is available here because i have not put one so now let me click on the download image so when you click on the download image this class has to be called and this has to happen in the background and after you have finished executing which means that the background process is done uh, uh, that logo image which is here should get 
get the image as the bitmap. So let's click on the download the image. And it got the logo from the internet. Please note, I don't have this in my uh, resources folder. This image came from the internet. But please note, nothing, no difference here. Uh, the image is still saying, uh, I mean, the text view is still saying, please wait while we get the image, etc., etc. So let's fix this. All I'm going to do here is in the design, we are going to uh, first, as soon as the uh, on create is called, I'm going to say progress text dot set visibility to invisible. And when this is uh, be beginning, which means as soon as this async task starts, before I execute my program, I am going to say uh, call that same progress txt dot set visibility to visible. So what we are doing is as soon as the program starts, I'm making the text view go away from me. And once uh, the async task process starts on before I go to the do in background, I'm going to show you the label which says please wait while we download the image and this will happen. And once you have finished it, all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that uh, progress text once again dot set visibility invisible so this progress text will be only visible while uh, your uh, async task is alive and once the async task has done its work that text will go away this is one the next part i've put a method called progress update but i've not given any updates as of now so if you see there are four uh, lines of code written in this uh, entire place so let me divide them into small small pieces i am not going to calculate uh, the data uh, how how much percentage of the image is done because it's a small image let me assume that every line after every line uh, i'm going to publish the result uh, so i'm going to show the progress uh, let's say 25 percent uh, after every line because there are four lines so i'm going to say publish progress and it's expecting an integer to be passed so let me just pass 25. after the second line uh, i'm going to put again this time 50 percent after this line i'm going to say uh, 75 percent and please note after this line i'm going to say 100 percent so by the time 100 percentage progress has been uh, published so every time that publish progress is called on progress update would be called and once progress update is called i can also set that in the text view so i'm going to call that progress text dot set text this will go fast because i'm not using a thread sleep so when the download is fast this text also will keep changing faster so let me just say uh, download it how much percentage is that values of zero I'm going to just put a percentage symbol done that's it so every time a uh, published progress is called whatever value you pass will come here and i'm going to get because only one value i'm passing at a time so there'll be only one value in the zeroth location i'll just get that and display the value that's it I'll rerun the program and check how it looks now the only the button is visible download the image so i'm going to click on the download the image thing so please note this will be going quickly uh, there'll be a small diff. I mean, uh, since I didn't put thread dot sleep, it will not delay. It will do everything quickly. So let's just see. It went off fast, but you got the data. You can also put thread dot sleep after every line which we have written as published progress, so that uh, that process would get delayed, and then you can see the output uh, when it is happening. Thank you, guys.